1916, the inception of the Wright Martin Company marked its entry into the burgeoning aviation industry by manufacturing engines under license, a standard practice for newcomers eager to establish a foothold. Their initial venture involved the production of the water-cooled Hispano Suiza V8, a subject I plan to explore in greater detail in an upcoming video. By 1919, Wright Aeronautical Corporation was formed following the divestiture of Wright Martin's assets to the Mack Truck Company, signaling a new chapter in aviation manufacturing. Despite the cessation of the Hispano Suiza's production in 1921, which had been the company's staple, the emerging void necessitated an innovative response. The search for a replacement led to the envisioning of a 200 horsepower air cooled radial engine to compensate for the discontinuation of the Suiza contracts. Enter Frederick Rentschler, a name familiar to our audience and the founder of Pratt and Whitney. Rentschler's strategic response to the predicament was the acquisition of a company already in the process of developing a promising product. This led to the purchase of the Lawrence Company, which was manufacturing the J-1, a nine-cylinder, 200-horsepower radial engine. The acquisition, finalized in May of 1923, saw C.L. Lawrence join Wright Aeronautical as vice president, bringing his expertise in the J-1 engine, which would undergo enhancements to become the J-3. The J-3 addressed the critical issue of cylinder cooling, a significant barrier to the advancement of air-cooled radial engines. However, the quest for perfection revealed the limitations of the aluminum cylinder design, culminating in the development of the J-4 engine. This iteration featured an innovative aluminum cylinder with a steel liner, designed to improve cooling efficiency despite initial setbacks. The evolution of Wright Aeronautical's engines reached a pivotal moment in 1927 with the introduction of the J-5 Whirlwind. This engine, smaller and more efficient, gained significant recognition for its role in Charles Lindbergh's historic nonstop flight from New York to Paris, winning the Raymond Ortigue Prize. The same year, C.L. Lawrence was honored with the Collier Trophy for his contributions to the development of radial engines, cementing the company's reputation in aviation history. The early 1920s presented Wright Aeronautical with both challenges and opportunities, as evidenced by their submission of a 1,454 cubic inch radial engine for an Army contest in 1921. Despite the R1 engine's promising design, it encountered issues during testing, notably the poultice head, a common design of the era that integrated valve seats into a closed cylinder liner. The mismatch in expansion rates between aluminum and steel components led to the inefficiencies and operational failures. The introduction of the Type J cylinder by Sam Herron, an external innovator, marked a significant improvement despite initial resistance from Wright Aeronautical. This adaptation underscored the company's commitment to overcoming obstacles through innovation and collaboration. Following a comprehensive resolution of its initial issues, the R1 engine was transformed into the R2, showcasing the ongoing commitment to refinement and innovation. Sam Herron's continued enhancements, particularly the replacement of the one-piece crank with a two-piece unit, facilitated the use of a one-piece master rod, marking a significant advancement in engine design. The R2's evolution into the R1454 in 1924 reflected the Army's adoption of new engine terminology systems, further solidifying the legacy of these engineering efforts. Heron's contributions extended beyond the cylinder improvement to include the design of a supercharger based on Armstrong Sidley's Jaguar, a project he undertook in 1917 alongside F.M. Green. This foresight laid the groundwork for future Wright radials characterized by supercharged systems, one-piece master rods, and rolling element bearing supported crankshafts. The departure of Frederick Rentschler from Wright Aeronautical to establish Pratt & Whitney marked a pivotal moment in aviation history. Rentschler's new venture led to the creation of the R1340 engine, which was both lighter and more powerful than its predecessors, setting a new benchmark in engine performance. Meanwhile, Wright Aeronautical ventured into the realm of water-cooled V-type engines with its T-Series, experimenting with these designs in various air races. However, the company eventually shifted focus away from liquid-cooled engines, a decision influenced by the evolving landscape of aviation technology. In the wake of Rentschler's departure, C.L. Lawrence ascended to the presidency of Wright Aeronautical, ushering in a new era of leadership. The company soon secured a contract for the P-1, a nine-cylinder radial engine boasting 654 cubic inches. Despite its innovative design, the P-1 faced significant challenges, primarily due to its unconventional short connecting rod ratio, which imposed undue stress on the pistons. This setback, coupled with the diversion of key personnel to other projects, underscored the complexities of pioneering engine development. The subsequent P-2 engine, while an attempt to build upon the foundations of the P-1, also fell short of expectations. This prompted the Navy to commission Wright Aeronautical to develop a more compact radial engine tailored for carrier-based observation aircraft, such as the Vought O2U. The result was the Samoon engine, which despite its lineage from the P-2's architecture, successfully delivered 350 horsepower at a maximum weight of 650 pounds. 
This period also witnessed the introduction of Pratt and Whitney's WASP engine, which redefined the standards for radial engines, challenging Wright Aeronautical to continue its pursuit of innovation and excellence in a rapidly evolving industry. Despite facing significant challenges in the departure of key personnel to Pratt & Whitney, Wright Aeronautical's fortunes began to turn in 1926 with the arrival of E.T. Jones, the head of the power plant section at McCook Field, and Sam Heron. Their expertise rejuvenated the company's engineering capabilities, leading to the development of the R-1750 Cyclone engine. This nine-cylinder radial engine capable of producing 500 horsepower was quickly recognized for its potential and adopted by the Navy for use in flying boats, marking a significant success for Wright Aeronautical. The company's trajectory took another positive turn in 1929 with its merger with Curtis, bringing on board Arthur Nutt, the designer of the successful D-12 engine. This collaboration fostered further innovation, culminating in the enhancements of the R-1750's bore to 6.125 inches and an increase in total displacement to 1,823 cubic inches by 1932. This iteration of the engine known as the F-Model Cyclone emerged as a cornerstone of American aviation, serving as the primary power plant for America's bombing efforts during World War II and powering the DC-2 commercial airliner. The Cyclone's success played a pivotal role in securing Wright Aeronautical's financial future and solidifying its position in the aviation industry. The introduction of the R-1820 Cyclone brought with it new advancements, including the transition from forged aluminum to forged steel crankcases, reflecting the continuous evolution of engine technology to meet the demands of both military and commercial aviation. The era also underscored the growing importance of supercharging as a means to boost engine performance. Initially led by General Electric in the development of superchargers, Wright Aeronautical embarked on designing its own superchargers in response to the realization that GE's models were outpaced by their British counterparts. This initiative resulted in superchargers of far greater efficiency, demonstrating Wright Aeronautical's commitment to innovation and its ability to adapt to the technological advancements of the era, ensuring its engines remained at the forefront of aviation technology. The F-Model Cyclone, boasting an 1,823 cubic inch displacement, epitomized the zenith of conventional nine-cylinder radial engine designed by World War II standards. This model was distinguished by its forged aluminum crankcase, ingeniously divided along the cylinder centerline into two sections, a testament to the intricate engineering practices of the era. The cylinder construction was a direct inheritance of Sam Heron's pioneering work, featuring a steel barrel with integrally machined cooling fins for optimal thermal management. Complementing this, the cast aluminum cylinder head was meticulously screwed and shrunk onto the barrel, housing two valves within the hemispherical combustion chamber. Notably, the exhaust valve incorporated Heron's innovative sodium cooling feature, enhancing the engine's thermal efficiency. The design's reliance on a one-piece master connecting rod necessitated a crankshaft composed of two pieces, each supported by robust roller bearing, showcasing an advanced approach to reducing friction and wear. The master rod bearing itself was a composite of steel-backed lead indium silver, a choice reflecting the era's cutting-edge materials science. The F-Series R1820 was further refined with the addition of two counterweights, including a pendulum-style dynamic counterweight at the rear to mitigate vibrations and enhance operational smoothness. A notable feature of the F-Series was its reduction gearing, a multi-pinion planetary system encased within a magnesium nose case. This case also accommodated the cam plate and roller tappets, underlining the engine's sophisticated valve timing mechanisms. Despite these advancements, the F-Series engines continued to utilize the GE-designed supercharger, a choice that, while historically significant, somewhat constrained the engine's potential power output and overall performance efficiency. Carburation was managed by a two-barrel downdraft Holley carburetor, a standard yet effective solution for fuel delivery. Performance metrics for the F-Model Cyclone varied, with output ranging from 575 to 890 horsepower at 1900 RPM against a backdrop of a typical weight of 1,000 pounds. This power-to-weight ratio underscored the engine's robustness and reliability in a variety of operational contexts. Ignition was reliably managed by two scintilla magnetos, each responsible for firing two plugs per cylinder, a redundancy that enhanced ignition reliability. The lubrication system adhered to the dry sump principle, featuring one pressure pump and one scavenge pump, ensuring optimal oil circulation and engine health. The F-Model Cyclone's intricate design and comprehensive features not only exemplified the pinnacle of radio engine technology, but also marked a significant chapter in aviation history, powering numerous aircraft through the challenges of World War II and beyond. The evolution of the Art 1820 engines into the G-Series marked a significant leap forward in aviation technology, addressing one of the perennial challenges in engine design, effective heat rejection. To combat this, the G-Series introduced an expanded cooling fin area, achieving an impressive total of 2,800 square inches per cylinder. This enhancement was pivotal in managing the thermal load, allowing the engine to maintain optimal performance under demanding conditions. 
A critical turning point in the development of the G-Series was Wright Aeronautical's decision to design its own superchargers. After recognizing that General Electric superchargers achieved no more than 60% efficiency, Wright's engineers embarked on an ambitious project to surpass this limitation. Their efforts bore fruit with the creation of a supercharger that reached a remarkable 75% efficiency, significantly boosting the engine's power output and operational efficiency. The G-Series also saw the two-piece crankcase undergo a redesign to harness the superior mechanical properties of steel forging. Despite the potential for increased weight due to denser material, careful engineering ensured that wall thickness was minimized, avoiding any undue weight penalty. This meticulous attention to detail ensured that the G-Series retained the robust design features of its predecessor, the F-Series, while achieving substantial performance improvements. The result was a powerhouse capable of delivering 1,200 horsepower at 2,500 RPM, a considerable enhancement over the F-Series. The onset of World War II catalyzed the transition from the F-Series to the G-Series engines, with the latter becoming the predominant version of the R1820 produced during this conflict. The shift was not only a testament to the G-Series superior performance and reliability, but also to the efficiencies gained in its manufacturing process. Manufacturing of the G-Series was notably undertaken by the Studebaker Corporation, which established three dedicated facilities for this purpose. The primary plant was located in South Bend, Indiana. Complementing the South Bend facility, a plant in Fort Wayne was tasked with producing gears and connecting rods, while another facility in Chicago focused on precision parts. This expansive manufacturing network underscored the strategic importance of the G-Series engines in supporting the Allied war effort, contributing significantly to the aerial capabilities that were crucial to achieving victory. The R1820 engine etched its place in history primarily through its instrumental role in the Aluminum Overcast, the fleet of B-17 bombers that formed the backbone of the Allied strategic bombing campaign over Germany during World War II. At the zenith of this campaign, as many as 1,500 four-engine bombers, each powered by four R1820 engines, dominated the skies, delivering a relentless barrage that significantly impacted the war's outcome. The engine's reliability and performance under the extreme conditions of high-altitude, long-distance flights contributed immensely to the success of these missions, underscoring the engine's pivotal role in the Allied war effort. Beyond its significant contributions to the B-17's operation, the versatility of the R-1820 was further demonstrated through its application in a variety of aircraft, each playing a unique role in the war. The engine powered the SBD Dauntless, a Navy dive bomber that, despite its slower speeds, was renowned for its lethal precision in dive bombing attacks, particularly during ba pivotal battles such as Midway. This ability to adapt to different combat requirements highlighted the engine's design excellence. Additionally, the R-1820 was the power plant for the Brewster F-2A Buffalo and the F-4F Wildcat, aircraft that were critical in early stages of the Pacific Theater. The engine's deployment in these fighters demonstrated its adaptability and reliability across different classes of aircraft from bombers to fighters, showcasing the broad impact of Wright Aeronautical's engineering on the war. Remarkably, the R-1820's influence extended beyond the skies. It was also adapted to power the T-1 heavy tank, illustrating the engine's versatility and the innovative approaches to mechanized warfare during the period. So, wrapping this all up, the R-1820 engine by Wright Aeronautical is nothing short of legendary. It's like the Swiss army knife of World War II engines, powering everything from sky-dominating B-17s in Europe to the game-changing SBD Dauntless. Wright Aeronautical wasn't just making engines, they were crafting the tools that would tip the scales in favor of the Allies. It's impressive how one engine model found its way into so many critical roles, from bombers to fighters and even tanks. What's impressive about the R-1820 is not just its versatility, but how it showcases the ingenuity that was so crucial back then. This engine didn't just fly, it flew missions that mattered, contributing massively to the Allies' ability to push back against the Axis powers. Plus, the fact that Wright Aeronautical managed to adapt this engine for both air and ground use is kind of mind-blowing. It's a testament to their innovation and a big reason why we saw such advancements in technology during and after the war. In a nutshell, the R-1820 and Wright Aeronautical played a massive part in the Allied success story. It's a perfect example of how behind every plane there was an engine, and behind that engine, a bunch of smart folks pushing the envelope of what was possible. This engine didn't just help win a war, it helped shape the future of aviation, and that's something worth remembering.